students! Welcome again to my class! Ito na naman yung grong vlogger ng Kuwait. Puro sa umaga, YouTuber and live streamer pag gabi. And today, my students in my reading and writing skills class will discuss to us about the pre-writing strategies. So please check this out. Hello everyone! Today, we will be discussing the lesson of using pre-writing strategies. Before we get into our topic, let us first start off with a quote from Dwight D. Eisenhower. He said that, In preparing for battle, I have always found that plans are useless but planning is indispensable. Now, as we go in deeper into our topic, we will learn what Eisenhower's code really means. Now let us understand why pre-writing strategies is such a significant part of writing a paper or just writing in general. So first, pre-writing is important to discover what we know and what we need to know about our essay. And second, Planning our writing helps us work more efficiently and produce a better output. The objective of today's lesson using pre-writing strategies is for you to distinguish between and among techniques in selecting and organizing information. How do you feel whenever you see a blank piece of paper or a blank computer screen? More often than not, you might feel terrified or afraid at the thought of needing to fill up that space in response to a writing assignment. You may panic because you feel like you do not have anything to say or you do not know exactly how to say what is on your mind or you just don't know how to start your writing assignment or your paper because your ideas are all over the place and you do not know what ideas or thoughts or your opinions that you want to put in your paper. The situations that I have mentioned may be familiar to you. So as we begin this lesson, you might have some apprehensions about writing. You might think that it is a hard task that only a few can excel at, where in reality, as long as you put your mind into it, you can succeed at writing. This is because as readers, we only see the finished product. We do not often see the writer's efforts at rewriting and writing just to convey the intended message. This lesson using pre-writing strategies aims to show you that writing, contrary to what you might think, is a skill that can be learned and improved when you know how it works and you find out what works for you. You will be introduced to some techniques to help make writing more manageable and effective. One such technique is planning your writing through pre-writing strategies. Now let's define pre-writing. What is pre-writing? So from its name, it's very self-explanatory and very obvious. This is the first stage of a writing process, which pertains to different techniques that help you discover ideas before writing the very first draft of a paper. During pre-writing, you use variety of strategies of things that interest you about a topic or new ways of thinking about it. It also helps you identify what else you need to know about a certain topic. This is valuable 
and time saving because determining a focus early on in the writing process will help you effectively plan and execute your research and write. In the pre-writing stage, it is important for you to refrain from critiquing your own ideas while they have not yet been fully formed. You should approach it with a relaxed and open state of mind. The pre-writing stage allows you to communicate with yourself so you can discover what you want to communicate with your readers. Hello, my name is Justin Shane C. Tunguhan and now I'm going to talk about determining the writing situation. Now, in order to determine the writing situation, you are to begin with knowing the kind of paper you were tasked to write. Now, we all know that there are different, there are various kinds of papers, and those would be concept paper, reflection paper, position paper, thesis paper, usage paper, argumentative paper, definition paper, and many more. Now, you would usually know the kind of paper you are required to write as it is usually given by your teacher. You also need to determine how lengthy your paper should be and by lengthy it meant by the minimum and maximum words that should be in your paper or how many pages should be in your paper. For example, you are you were required to write a reflection paper and you have to write down your thoughts, analysis, and view as well as the body, introduction, body, and conclusion. And your paper must have a minimum of 300 words, or in other words, let's say one to one to two pages. And you just have to carefully read the assigned task given, as it can help you with what to expect and do when writing your work. Next is to determine the writing situation, or in other words, the context of your assigned work, as there are some factors that you need to establish, like is there an assigned topic? Or can I decide on the topic I want? What is the purpose of my paper? Is my topic worth reading? Speaking of purpose, the, that is the first thing that you actually need to consider. The, because the purpose of your work is basically the reason on why you're writing a paper. And now we, we all know that each kind of paper has its own role. And depending on the kind of paper that you're required, required to write, your purpose could vary to either to persuade, to inform, to entertain, or to explain to the readers. Another thing to consider is your readers. You have to recognize who your readers are and anticipate their expectations, background, and knowledge on the topic on hand. With that taking into consideration, you will be able to write effectively. And when you want to tailor fit your writing according to the audience's taste, there are things that you would need to consider in order to get the response that you want from your writing, from your work. And these are some of the questions that I took from the book that you need to consider. Are my readers going to be more female dominant or male dominant? What do I want them to learn from my work? What age group are likely to read my work? How do I want to influence them? And once you have determined your type of audience and purpose, you may now proceed to thinking about your paper's topic. So that's another thing that you have to determine. It is the topic. And there are times that your teacher would give you an assigned topic or, you, or the freedom to choose your own. And it, when it comes to choosing a topic, you should be specific with your topic and make sure to narrow it down and limit it and do not broaden it since you will since your work will will lack focus with the specific issue already chosen it must be a topic that you are familiar with that you are knowledgeable with or a topic that you are willing to learn more about which gives you the sense of credibility on your work since you have showed adequate proficiency on the topic. And lastly, now that you have thought carefully about the purpose, audience, and topic, another thing to consider 
is the expression or tonality you plan to use when making your paper. As this refers to the attitude and feelings whether you are planning to express it in a neutral, formal, informal, calm, or in a slightly aggravated tone. And with that being said, this is on how to determine the writing situations. And that is all. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye! Type of the writing. Listing. Making a list can help you develop ideas for writing once you have a particular focus. If you want to take a stand on a subject, you might list the top 10 reasons why you're taking that particular stand. Or once you have a particular topic, you might list the different aspects of that topic. Mapping, or also known as diagramming, helps you immediately group and see relationship among ideas. Mapping and diagramming may help you create and organize information on a topic. Put the subject in the center of a page. Circle it. As you think of others' ideas, try them on the page surrounding the central idea. Link the new ideas to the central Circle with lines. Free writing. It's just what it says, writing freely. Whatever comes into your mind without caring about the spelling, punctuation, other others. It's a way to free up your thoughts. Help you know where your interest lies and where your fingers moving on the keyboard. Focus yourself to continue writing even if nothing specific comes to your mind. For 5 minutes to 10 minutes long stop. This free writing will include many ideas at this point. Generating ideas is what is important, not the drama or the spelling. Brain store. A person writing on many different color sticky notes can be a way. Brainstorming is like free writing around a specific topic, identifying as many ideas as possible that are related to a particular topic. To brainstorm, let your thoughts about a specific topic flow and lead those thoughts in paper, a computer, or a sticky notes. Outlining can be another thread writing strategy. Can help you maintain a clear focus in your research essay because an outline helps you helps you see your wallpaper in a condensed form, which can help you create a good plan for how you organize your research and develop your ideas. <music> Journaling Many people write in formal journals, personal journals, or online blogs. Writers not only record events in journals, but also reflect and record thoughts, observations, questions, and feelings. Journals are safe places to record your experience of the world. Also can help you develop your ideas for writing.
why trading strategies are important. Here are a short list of the reasons why trading is important. It helps you. It helps the writer develop clear reasoning. It helps writers find weak points in arguments. Many lawyers, businessmen, businesswoman can help uses many uh, many writing strategies for their arguments. It increases efficiency by helping the writer map, plan, or brainstorm. Without the writing before beginning a first draft, it helps a writer organize their thoughts, and also it helps a writer process the order of thought so they can organize them effectively for their audience. Today I'll be talking about the essential questions and examples of pre-writing strategies. For the first essential question, what is the role of pre-writing in the writing process? Pre-writing is the preparation process that you can complete before you actually write your paper, essay, or summary. Pre-writing helps you organize your thoughts, plan your research or writing, and clarify your thesis. For the second essential question, how do the audience, purpose, subject, and context each shape writing? For context, it is a type of situation of setting in which behaviors and other environmental patterns impact interaction with the text. The writer should visualize or forecast audience context. For audience, it is a specified group of potential readers most likely to come into contact with your essay. For purpose, it is the major goal of your writing. Audience awareness is basically knowing who needs to be convinced and how to convince them. Audience awareness begins the moment you form the thesis before you start writing. Now I'll be talking about the examples of pre-writing strategies. So one of the examples of the pre-writing strategies is when pre-writing is the getting ready to write stage. The traditional notion that writers have a topic completely thought out and ready to flow onto the new page is ridiculous. Writers begin tentatively talking, writing, reading, brainstorming to see what they know and in what direction they want to go. The next example is pre-writing involves anything you do to help yourself decide what your central idea is or what details, examples, reasons, or content you will include. Free writing, brainstorming, and clustering are the types of pre writing. Thinking, talking to other people, reading related material, outlining or organizing ideas are all form of pre writing. Obviously, you can pre write at any time in the writing process. Whenever you want to think up new materials, simply stop what you're doing and start using one of the pre writing strategies. Ayan, ayan, mga students, you have heard the different points of views of my students. And if you want to share your thoughts and opinions too, please comment down. And don't forget to click the <laughs> notification bell in order for you to be updated if I have new videos. And don't forget to subscribe <laughs> to my channel because as I usually say, subscribe now, laugh, and learn later. Once again, ito pong yung gurong vlogger ng Kuwait. Kuroso Maga, YouTuber and live streamer paggabi, saying God bless you all at maraming maraming salamat po. Bye-bye!